Welcome to another video. This is supposed to be um, a quick refresher of just terms and concepts. The calculations are not complicated um, because we have simple addition and subtraction. That's all we're going to be doing. However, you need to know what the trace of a matrix means. You also need to know what it means for a matrix to not be full rank. Now, if you don't know those two terms, you can't answer this question. So, um, let's start with the first one. The trace of a matrix is the sum of the entries on the main diagonal. So if you look at the main diagonal, which is the one that starts here, just go all the way down here. If you add up all the numbers here, you've got your trace. So what we're saying is A plus this fraction is equal to 5. And with that, you can find A. So how do we find B? I think we cannot find two things using one equation. Definitely, we need more information. And A is not full rank, what does it mean? Well, it means that the columns of A are not linearly independent. That is, one is a scalar multiple of the other. It's just basic like that. Or, if you try to take the determinant of that matrix, you're going to get a zero, because two columns in it are not linearly independent. Or if you reduce it to reduce row echelon form, you're going to get a column of zeros or a row of zeros. This is one more thing I was thinking about, but it's not happening now. Okay, just disappeared. But that's it. That's all you have to do. Let's get into the video. So let's use the first information. The trace is equal to 5. So since trace of A is equal to 5, then it means that a plus 7 minus 11a over 3 is equal to 5. So what I'm going to do is multiply every term by 3 just to get rid of the fraction. So I have 3a plus 7 minus 11a equals 15. If I put these together, I get negative 8a. And move the 7 over, I get 8. That means my a equals minus 1. So there are two ways you can go about this having gotten your a to be minus 1. Go back and plug in a here and plug in a here and see what the matrix looks like and then use the idea that the columns are not linearly independent to guess okay what did I do to 2 to get the number here that's what I'm going to do to a to get the number here. So you can go back to the matrix. Let's go back here. So this is the solved matrix. So we have a is minus 1. This is 2. What would this number be? If we plug in a to be minus 1, we have 7 minus 11 times minus 1. That's going to be 7 plus 11, which is 18. Divided by 3 is going to be 6. Oh, so I can easily predict what this number is since I know that the columns are not linearly independent. So what did I do to 2 to get 6? I multiplied it by 3. That's what I have to do here. Multiply it by 3 and I get minus 3. This should be my answer. And if you want to go this way, what did I do to 2 to get minus 1? Well, I multiplied it by negative 1 half. Negative 1 half times 2 gives me minus 1. Negative 1 half times 6 is going to give me minus 3. That's just to show that it is not full rank. Or you can say if a matrix is not full rank, the determinant is equal to 0. And that's what you can use to predict where B is. So let's still leave B blank. So we know since A is not full rank. Oh, what I forgot to say, it is not invertible. Okay, and this is the implication. If it is not invertible, then the determinant is equal to zero. Or if the determinant is zero, it is not invertible and it is not full rank. Here we're gonna multiply and say the determinant of a is equal to zero. So what's the determinant of a? It's uh, minus one times six minus one multiplied by six minus two times b is equal to zero. So minus six minus two b equals zero, which means minus six equals two b, which implies b equals negative three. We found A and B. The purpose of this video is to give you a good refresher on what the trace of a matrix is and what it means for a matrix to not be full rank and the implications. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.